This is actually stems from a conversation that Pastor had as we were looking with going, looking at going with Bibles International. Um, I am not the most inspiring speaker in the world, and so I don't even like to get up in front of people and talk. And I mentioned that to Pastor several times, and he he brought this passage to my mind. And as I as we go from church to church, and pe people come up to me after after uh, speaking. It just, it's such a humbling experience for them to say, you know, that was a blessing. You know, the Lord really spoke, spoke, you know, to me through your message. And I'm thinking, did you hear the same thing I heard? Uh, did you hear something different? But it's the Lord. And uh, Paul says in verse 7 of chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians. He says, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So I've come to the conclusion, um, although I'm going to do my best uh, when I speak God's word, because I think that you should, um, I'm not going to aspire to be the world's greatest orator. Uh, I just want to get the message across with the Lord's help and let him uh, drive the message home. Second thing is God will provide for his people, through his people. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 4. Look at verse 15. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound, I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. I just have to commend Bria Baptist Church as a church that takes care of their missionaries. Uh, you guys are amazing. It's outstanding. I just kind of look back through the past year of uh, what the Lord had done. The Lord has blessed us through you. And obviously... We have your prayers, your love, your friendship, your fellowship. I was thinking back to the Christmas offerings, the garage sale proceeds, um, the regular support, uh, anonymous gifts that show up on our account from time to time, and this birthday thing. This is crazy. <laughs> I've never had a two-month-long birthday before, but it was just, it really, it really spoke to our hearts and mine personally, just all the love that was shown to us uh, through the cards and the gifts and uh, just the well wishes. It was just so amazing, and we were so glad to be a part of Berea Baptist Church. And we love you guys, and it's very obvious that you love us. Well, lastly, um, the thing that I've learned that is God will magnify his word. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 2 real quick. It's the Christmas season. We can tell. We can, we can read through this. Matthew, Matthew chapter 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, and that shall rule my people Israel. We know the rest of the story. Herod sent the, the Magi to Bethlehem, and you know they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod because he had evil intentions. But my question is, what about the scribes 
and the lawyers and the religious people. None of them went to Bethlehem. No, none of them bothered to check it out. It's almost like they, they said, oh, there's some, there's some guys out here that, want, that said there's a king being born, and it says in Micah that it'll be born in Bethlehem. Well, I hope they find him. And, you know, that was the end of the story for them. No one bothered to look except for the foreign magi and the foreign king who had ulterior motives of his own. Well, how did this come about? How could they just miss this big event in the, the life of the Jewish nation, in the history of the world? Well, what had happened is they, Satan had pulled them away from the scriptures for centuries. You know, after the Old Testament canon was completed, then they began to expound on that. They, we call that the Talmud. And so the Jewish rabbis and lawyers, they would make writings about it. And, they, you know, they're getting further and further away. The more writings are. Right now, the Talmud, I believe, is 6,200 pages long. So it's not a little thing. And so, so they were putting these writings on equal or even greater power, power with Scripture. And so Scripture was totally lost. And that was really Satan's, Satan's plan all along. And so, this is, this is for free, I thought I'd throw this in. Um, do we put the right emphasis on God's word, or do we put more value on what people, commentators, etc., preachers say about God's word, rather than what God's word says about itself? As we know from the story of the church at Berea, they searched the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. They didn't just take uh, a commentator's word for it. And so, uh, that's one thing the Lord has taught me, uh, is to really be in his word and see what God's word says about itself. Uh, so let's turn to 2 Peter as we close here tonight. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Peter's talking to his readers here under the inspiration of, of God. And he says, you know what? We have not followed cunningly follow, devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Peter's saying, you know, we've talked to you about being with the Lord, um, the, the miracles that he did. We didn't make this stuff up. This really happened. And then he goes on to tell them about the experience that he had with Peter and John on the Mount of Transfiguration in verse 17. It says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So Peter is saying, We heard God's voice audibly bringing glory to his Son. But look at the next verse. Peter says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, for until you do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. Peter's saying, you know what? We heard God's voice audibly, but you know what has a better track record than that? The Old Testament scriptures, which were what was in existence at the time. God's written word is supreme over any experience that Peter or anyone else can have. And we need to remember that. God's word is supreme. And he goes on to talk about how we receive God's word. Uh, in the next verse, it says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. Now, interpretation to us uh, may not, it's kind of an unfortunate word choice, uh, although the case can be made that scripture must agree with itself. Uh, when you do study of the scripture, and also that the Holy, it's the Holy Spirit that brings illumination when we read scripture. But what this verse is really talking about is not how we interpret scripture, but the source of scripture. And he follows that up with the next verse. He explains that. It says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. David just didn't set out uh, by his sheep one day and decide to write a couple of psalms and that became scripture. No, the Holy Spirit moved upon him to write the words that he wrote and that became scripture. And so these are some things that uh, the Lord has impressed upon my heart this year and uh, we're looking forward to what he will, what he will do uh, in the years to come. Thank you again so much for your, your love and support. It is really a joy to be with you this week. 
and we look forward to uh, spending time with as many of you as we can.